Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Pastor Ian and Dale. Fancy being here on their birthday. That's wonderful, isn't it? I said to Dale yesterday, it's your birthday today. But because I like you, I won't sing happy birthday to you. Because <laughs> God, when he handed out singing voices, I was hiding behind a door somewhere. But anyhow, it's so wonderful to be here. And it's wonderful to be with Pastor Ian and Dale. And some of you that I've gotten to know very well, Time is always at a premium on a Sunday morning and so I'm going to not uh, spend any time on introductions. My wife said to uh, send you her love. She didn't come this time, but she loves Pastor Ian and Dale and all of you and she asked me to make sure I gave you her love. Her name is Anne. She's a very great lady. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So I'm going to share a couple of testimonies as I start that I believe will lift your faith for those of you that want a miracle today. And the power of God's going to fall in this place. Healings and miracles will take place here today. The spirit of God will move on people. Some of you will come alive on the inside and realize I need God to come into my life to be my friend. But something of the Holy Spirit is going to happen just quietly in our hearts or very demonstrably outwardly. I was in the King of Roy, which is only three hours from where I live. It wasn't a big church. There was no music. There were musicians were all fly in and out workers, so they were out at that time. Had six meetings there. And a man came up and he said, Clark, do you remember me? I said, I'm sorry, I don't. He said, 38 years ago, I went to West End, which is a, where I had a church. Had a move of God there. He said, when I walked in, I could only walk like that. And he said, I hadn't straightened up for a long, long time. My back was too bad and all that stuff. And he said, you had a word of knowledge, which he said, I'd never seen anything happen like that. But about a man who had a very bad back and this man stood up and he started to come down towards you and you said, now people are saying that I press a nerve and that makes people fall down. I got a lot of criticism about that in the early days. And I said, just to show you it's God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And he said, you're about 20 meters from him. The power of God hit him, threw him on the concrete floor. We didn't have carpets. It was a bit rough. Uh, and he hit the floor flat on his back. And he got up totally healed. And then he said, you said, there's another one just near him. You too have got a very bad back. He said, that was me. And I got up and, and you came down and he said, you ran to me. Put your hand near me, but you didn't touch me. The power came and hit me. He said, I didn't know it happened, but I was looking up at the roof. We didn't have a ceiling either. <laughs> we were looking up at the roof. And he said, I thought, what is happening? He said, I'd never been in anything like it. But when I got up, I got up straight. And I said, I've been straight ever since. 38 years. I was in Rockhampton recently. Central coast city of Queensland. And they had a mass prayer. A lot of people got healed and had a mass prayer for healing. And asked those that now were free and whatever to come out the front. About 30 did. And there was one girl many great stories, but one girl, she was born with very dim vision, could barely see. 
and from early age had thick glasses and uh, with them she was still very vision impaired. Her father was an architect. They didn't go to that church but that morning they turned up for whatever reason. And she couldn't talk, she was crying too much. And the father said, my daughter who was born with hardly any sight can now read small print with no glasses. Isn't Jesus wonderful? He did that all by himself without any help. And there's hundreds of other stories like that I could tell. I want faith to rise in your heart today. When I'm finished speaking, that God will move over you. God will touch you. I want to talk about living out of God. In 2 Corinthians 4, verses 16 to 18, we read this, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The Bible tells us that we are made in the image of God. The Bible tells us in John 4, 24, God is a spirit. So the essence of you is spirit. Whether you know it or believe it or not, it makes no difference. The essence of you is spirit. Or the Bible calls your spirit your inward man or woman, the inward person you. The real you on the inside is your spirit. And the outward you, well, a lot of you here are young, wonderful. But you will grow old if you live long enough. That's a certainty. And most likely wrinkles will turn up and all other things that you wish to goodness would never turn up. You'll bend over and say, what else can I do now that I'm down here? <laughs> and all it is is that you're growing older. But the inward man is renewed day by day. Yes. And I've discovered as the years have gone by, I'm no older on the inside than I was when I was 30. Yeah. I am still the same. I've still got my dreams. I still want to see God move. Yeah powerfully and I, the power of God will be over you age has got nothing to do with it young or old or in between it's the spirit that's everything the human being is just a, a carrier of the spirit well you're a spirit now the Bible says Christ in you is the hope of glory Colossians 1 27 him we preach Christ in you. The Spirit of Jesus Christ, when you got born again or gave your life to Christ, whatever terminology you use, you invited Him to come into your life. The Spirit of Jesus came into you and joined Himself to your spirit, 1 Corinthians six seventeen declares. And then Jesus said in Matthew 28, I will never leave you nor will I ever forsake you. Well, he's joined to you. Wherever you go, he goes. When you wake up in the morning, he's there, whether you feel him or not. Well, if you learn how to be aware of God, if you learn how to live from your spirit rather than just your head, if you learn how to be aware of this mighty one who walks with you, your life will be richer by a million fold. He's the one that makes the difference. You weren't born for a six foot hole in the ground. You were born for heaven. This world is just a training ground for eternity. God is eternal. You are an eternal being. We had a starting point with a baby in a mother's womb will live forever. Whether they are born alive or not, they will live forever. 
the spirit will go on. Anyhow, when I got born again, I was a bit rough. And I endeavoured to be more loving and more kind. But eruptions would take place inside of me and it would blow it all. But I really was sincere and earnest and, and I was working hard at it. I found it hard to change. I'd become a Christian, but I found it hard to control my temper and stuff like that. Uh, I was told when I went to Bible college that there were sins of commission, that's what we did. That was giving me a lot of trouble on the farm before I went to Bible college. Just handling them. Then I was told there were sins of omission too. And it seemed to me like it was just a big maze. I felt it was a bit hopeless. I used to often feel guilty and condemned that I wasn't good enough. And so I'd work harder at it to try to be better. Is anybody here like that? Then today will be an answer for you. The answer is not in you trying harder. It's not in you working at it. That's not Christianity. I'll talk about Christianity in a moment. Romans 7, 18, 7, 18 was true for me. For the good, uh, for I know that it is in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. I was trying to make myself better so that God would love me more. God loved me when I was a stockman in the Northern Territory. God loved me when I was swearing and whatever. God loved me in all those stages of life. God loves you. Whether you're good or whether you're bad, God loves you. God loves you. You're important to God. God created you in your mother's womb. Yeah, that's right. and whether you believe that or not, it's true. That God is your God. He loves you. He knows you. Yeah. He wants your fellowship. He wants you to love him back. He's made a big price for you, for me. Sent his son to die on a cross. A horrible and a cruel and tortured death to take all of your sin and mine and to give us his standing with Father God. To discover how to fix a problem, you need to see how the problem began. God created Adam, sculptured him from the dust of the ground, beautifully sculptured, but that's what he was, dust. And then God breathed his spirit, his ruach, into Adam. And Adam became a living being. The spirit entered in to our four first human being. When you got born again, the spirit of Jesus came into you. And you lived eternally. Adam was in, lived with God in total harmony. Then Eve was uh, built from Adam. And Adam was totally dependent on God. He knew no other lifestyle. Why wouldn't you be dependent on God? God had laid everything on. Pawpaws, mangoes, watermelon, everything. Potatoes, taro if you're a Pacific Islander. Everything was there. He said, Adam, help yourself. Adam didn't earn it. He didn't deserve it. He was just created. And he and God were friends. Then the temptation came. Satan came with this temptation. Has God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And Eve said, we can eat of every tree, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
we can't eat. For in the day we eat it, we'd die. He said, you won't die. He said, your eyes will be opened. You'll become wise. And the tree did look good for food. It was attractive to the eyes. And she ate. And her eyes were opened. And Adam loved her and he ate too, knowing that it was the wrong thing to do. The temptation was you'll be as God yourself. You'll be a forever God yourself. You won't need to be dependent on another one. You'll have it all yourself. You'll be able to do it. Oh, okay, if you say a prayer, God help me every now and again. Don't mind that. But you don't have to be dependent. That was the real temptation. You'll be as God, that is, you'll be self-sufficient. You'll have your own independence. It'll be your life, your dreams, your actions, your ambitions, your drives. They ate of that evil and they became a fallen creature. Now, Adam was always a self. Nothing wrong with being a self. A self is a a decision-making individual. Adam was that. But when they fell, they became a self-centered self rather than a God-centered self. God doesn't want to take away your personality. God loves you. He gave it to you. God wants to enhance you, make you greater. Enhance your mind, your capacities. God loves you. But he wants to be the center of your life. You were created to be a God-centered person. The fall made you a self-centered person. Self, it's all about me. It's all about me. I want what you've got, so I'll take it. I'll cheat, I'll lie, I'll steal. I want. It's all about me. It's all about me. They advertise today, buy this, you deserve it. It's all about me. The self-centered being. Adam and Eve ate of that evil. It was presented so attractively. And they became a self doing one of three things, either trying to find their way back to God or somehow blaming God for the mess they were in, as many people do today. They say, if God was so great, why does he let the world go like this? Well, of course, it's people that did it, not God. I've had people say to me, if God was so loving, why does he let people starve? I said, he doesn't. He supplies food for everybody. He has one family. He doesn't have races. He has one family. They pay people not to grow food in America, just to keep the price up. Millions can starve, but we in the West have got plenty. God just says to his human family, share. And if human beings won't share, it's not God's fault. It's our fault. It's the self-centered self. I want. I want some more dollars, so a million people die, that's okay, but as long as I prosper. So now that's that's not exaggerated, actually. Somehow blaming God for the mess. Others just give up and live out of the self and do the best. The self-centered self is called the flesh in the New Testament. It's born of evil. You can't make it good. So if you're in the flesh, you can't please God, the Bible says. Paul said, and he taught us, I am crucified with Christ. In the foreknowledge of God, he knew you all. He knew this church. He knew this meeting. Right before the creation of the world, God's knowledge is infinite. 
He knew me and he knew you. And he said, when my son dies, I'm going to take that self-centered nature of every person who'll turn to me and put it to death. I didn't know that. So I struggled to make myself good. You can't make it good because it was born of evil. My conduct then comes out of independent me, the flesh, or it comes out of the influence of God's Spirit within me. So does you. That's who the whole world is. Either the flesh, the independent me, the self-centered me, or the Christ who dwells within me. So I can live out of God who lives within me, or I can live out of me and try to make me better. It's a lot of hard work and I wish you well, but I couldn't do it. But he is good. The one who lives in you is already holy. You can't improve on his holiness. It's that dependence on him, which at the start might seem like, oh, I depend on nobody. Well, that's your trouble. Really, it was my trouble. I thought I was tough. To depend on Jesus Christ is the greatest way to live in the whole world. I am dependent on another. I can't heal anybody. I've got no powers like that. He does have though. And he lives inside of me. He lives in you. Same Christ that lives in me lives in you. Same Holy Spirit that worked through St. Paul in Bible days lives in you. Same one. Hadn't forgotten a thing. So I can understand why the Bible says in Luke 18, 18, a certain ruler asked him saying, uh, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that's God. Only God has the source of goodness in himself. We don't, but Jesus came to live inside of us. When he who is my life shall appear, Colossians 3, 4 says, that he came to be the source of my life, that I can live out of his character, that I can live out of his ability, that I can live out of the mighty one. Wow. Now, I've had to learn how to do that. And you learn how to do it too. But that's the secret. But the only thing that self can create is Phariseeism. It can look good on the outside. It can dress up in a suit on a Sunday and go to church. But if they, the ugliness is still on the inside, It'll break out in unexpected ways. It'll be cruel in some way or other. It'll be judgmental. It'll put other people down. It'll want its own way. It'll be like that. If you've really seen that you're a created being and the mighty Spirit of God, who is love, came to live inside of me and that he offers me to be the source of my life now so that he can live through me if I truly can see that. Why? It'll cause you to worship. Whether you can sing or can't sing, whether your worship comes in thoughts or in actions or in words, it'll cause you to worship. You love me. You've come to live in me. It's too big for me that God would humble himself to live inside of me and you. God of worship has seen that in him I live and move and have my being. The very breath that I breathe comes from God. If he cut the air out, I'd be dead. I can only contain and express God's goodness. 
of worship is seen, if I have any honor, if any praise comes to me, if I have any wealth or riches, it's from God. It didn't originate with me, for God gave me the brains to make the wealth. God gave me the voice to sing with. Well, he didn't give me one to sing with, but he gave me one to speak with. But if you can sing like you folks did up here and play these instruments, I congratulate you and I honor you. But it was God who gave you that ability. So when people come up and say, you did so well today, simply say, thank you. But when you get on your own, I return the glory to you, God. You gave me this ability and I worship you. I give you honor. I give you praise. If you make some money and you're doing well, you want to say, Father, I just honor you. You gave me the brains and the ability to make this money so I can look after my family and give to the poor, etc. God, I honor you. I worship you. If there's any glory to you, be it unto him. Become a worshiper in word or in song or expression of your life. What is my place then? How do I make all this work? So I'd like to bring it together with a story. I read a story once about a boy who was eight or nine years old. He was in a science class at school. He's very interested in science. And this teacher had his attention. They said, today we're going to do an experiment. He liked experiments. He said, we're going to go outside where it's sunny to do this experiment. So the whole class filed out, but this little boy was extremely interested in science. And the teacher scrunched up some paper, put it on the ground, and got a mirror. And he held the mirror up till the sun's rays hit the mirror and were directed onto that scrunched up bit of paper. And he said, this mirror can magnify the sun and direct its rays onto that paper. You watch what will happen to the paper. Well, the little fella was all eyes and 100% attention was focused on that paper. After a little time, he saw a wisp of smoke come. Wow. And then it burst into flames. He said, wow. He couldn't wait to get home. He got home and went inside, got some paper, scrunched it up, got his mother's mirror and went outside because it was still the sun was up. And he, he was going to be a scientist. So he's holding the mirror and directing the sun. Tongue was out. He was concentrating 100%. And a bit of smoke came and it burst into fire. He said, I'm a scientist. <laughs> he instantly dreamt of building a machine that could go to the moon. He'd become a scientist. I learned what Christianity was. Now the mirror is not the sun. But the mirror could contain the sun's rays and reflect them. I'm not God. Thank God for that. Too many problems. <laughs> but I can contain the Son of God because he allows me to. And I can reflect him wherever I go. I can reflect his love for he lives inside of me. He lives in you. I can reflect his power for he lives in me and he lives in you. I can reflect his patience where necessary. I can reflect God. I can be a mirror. I can't be God and who would want to be? His job? Huh, not for me. Six people praying, all wanting different things. Lord, let it be sunny today. Lord, let it rain today. <laughs> Who would want to be God? However, He comes to live inside of us. The Bible says so. Now I can reflect Him. Have you ever seen a mirror have a nervous breakdown trying to be a mirror? I haven't. It's just a mirror. That's what I am, a mirror. 
When I've really seen that, I can settle down. I don't have to be at all, to do it all. I can just reflect the one who lives within me. He is it all. He is everything I ever want to be. And when he who is my life shall appear, I'll be like him, the Bible says. So will you. So he's come to live inside of you. He's perfect. He has perfect patience. He has perfect calmness. He's, he's not stressed. He is your life. If you stop trying to be it all and do it all and let him who is it all flow through you, you'll find peace and wholeness and the beauty of God. And you'll become a worshipper. For again and again, people will say, oh, thank you so much. And you say, God, it's you who's done it in me. I worship you. I give you praise and honor and glory. For you alone are God. And you'll be content to take your place as a God indwelt person, whom God wants to enhance your personality, enhance your whole life, because He loves you. He wants you to be the best that you could ever be in whatever field you choose to live your life. And I honor God by being my best at whatever he calls me to be. And you do too. So I don't have to go round with a long mouth because I'm reflecting the one who's joyful. Yeah. I don't have to say, I wonder, can I do it? Because I'm reflecting the one who can do it. I don't have to be at all. I just have to reflect the one who is at all. Christianity is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a life lived in dependence on God. And it's a wonderful way to live your life. So resign from being one of the pantheon of the gods. <laughs> Give it up. I don't have to be a forever God. Just be you indwelt by the one who is God. Be a mirror. Wherever you go, reflect him. If somebody gets a cranky look, smile. Just, just be a God-indwelt person. If you're here today and you've never said, well, Clark, I... I haven't asked him really to come into my life. Not really, just surrendered my life to him and asked him to live inside of me, be my saviour and my God. I've never really asked him to forgive all my wrong that I've done and to take away my inner guilt and shame, even my unconscious guilt, which breeds so many diseases and sicknesses. I've never asked him to do it. I'm asking you this morning to let him come into your life. Be your saviour. He loves you incredibly. He went all the way to a cross just for you. He asks you to come to him. He said, whosoever wills, this is Jesus speaking, may come to me and he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Whosoever wills, that's you. It's everybody in Invercargill. Whosoever wills may come to me. And if you come, I won't say no. What an amazing promise from the God of the universe. So come to him this morning. Could we bow our heads in prayer? Just as a moment of quietness and as you think about your life, eternity to come, where will you spend eternity? When you stand before God, 
He'll have one big question. What did you do with Jesus? Has he taken away your sin? Is it personal to you? Do you need to come to Jesus today? Well, we all need to come to Jesus. Many of us here have already done so. Do you need to? While heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you would say, Clark, I would like him to come into my life, to take away my sin, to be my saviour, my indwelling one and my friend, would you just quietly raise your hand, please, and lift it up to God. I'll have my eyes open. When I see your hand, I'll ask you to put it down. But it's important, it is more than important, that we give our lives to God. Would you raise your hand, lift it up? Would you please? I can see a hand up the back up there. Are you worshipping or raising it? to God. I'm not sure which. Is there anybody? Would you raise your hand? Would you? Would you? Would you? Then I'd like a musician to come, please. And just to play. And I'm just going to come down here to the front. And I'm going to ask that if you're here, you say, Clark, deep in my heart, I'd really like to do that. Then we're all going to stand. And we'd ask that you'd just make your way down here to the front. Stand in a line in front of me, facing me. I'd like to pray a very special prayer for you as you give your heart to God today. Could we all stand? I won't prolong this, it'll only be a minute at the outside. So if you're coming, you just make your way down here now. Stand along in a line in front, facing me. I would love to pray a very special prayer with you. Would you come? Just make your way out of there. It's not unusual, it's normal for people to come to God. It's the most natural thing that a human being can ever do is come to God. Would you come today? Would you come? Would you? One last time I'm going to ask. If I see you starting to move, I'll wait. I'd love you to come. Would you come today? Would you give your life to him today? Ask him to come into your life, to be your saviour? Would you come? Would you come? Then I'd like to pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, I know how shy I was the night I got born again. Perhaps some people here are shy too. They don't want to come publicly like that. But Father, I pray for them. And I pray that as they say this simple prayer, that you'll come into their life. If you're like that, would you say this prayer? Well, why doesn't everybody say it and then nobody's embarrassed? Out loud, after me, saying these words to Jesus. My Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord Jesus Christ I, open my I open my life to you. I ask you to come into my life, to, into my life. To, be my to be my Lord and my Savior. My Savior. Please forgive all of my sin. And receive me as your child. Live inside of me by your Spirit. And I will reflect you. And I'll learn how to do it. And become better and better at it as time goes by. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to say that if you said that prayer and you really meant it and was sort of like the first time, you come and see Pastor Ian or Pastor Dale and just say to them, I said that prayer today. 
That's all you've got to say. They'll know everything. They'll, they'll just know. And now, if I could have, just have a few minutes, and we're just going to pray for the sick. Well, there's a person here in uh, your back had three or four discs, and I'm sorry, I'm, I can't tell exactly. Uh, so it was three or four discs that were compressed. I think it was in an accident. And it gives you terrible pain. Which person is this, please? Would you raise your hand? And I believe God's going to heal you now. Thank you, come. God's going to give you a miracle today. And he's a creator, so he'll just create new discs for you. And why? Oh, there comes the power now. I can see it falling on you. Came out of heaven. And right at this moment, you just relax. And this moment, he'll be creating discs and putting them inside of you. It's making a back well. So you can do anything. Come on up. There we go. Thank you. Help her. That's the way. Help her up. That's the way. There we go. Well, how's that? Did that hurt you getting up? No. No? Could you touch your toes? I could. I could do all things, but it was very sore. Too. It was very sore. Yeah. What made it sore? I did have a car accident. Yeah, it? but it was it hurting today? A little bit. A little bit. Well, anyhow, you're going to find it just won't hurt you. Oh, here comes the power again. It's falling on you. Just because he loves you. I'd like to pray for a person, please. And your difficulty is, gives you a lot of trouble. Intermittent, but a lot of trouble. It's right here on your right side, and right where my hand is. It's in there, it's something to do with a bone in there that's sort of wrong. God's going to heal you. Real fast, please. Put your hand up. Very fast. Give me a thank you. Would you come on down? And I'd like to pray for a person, please, at the base of your spine. It's right there. It was damaged uh, in something. I suppose it was an accident. But the word I have is damaged. So uh, who's that person, please? Real fast. We want to get through. Thank you. Would you come? He's going to heal you today. Set you free. There's another person here and you just thought this to yourself. I can't read minds, but I can listen to the Holy Ghost. You thought this. You thought it's my whole spine. Who's that person, please? That You just thought that then. It's my whole spine. That's bad. Who's that one? Quick, I can't see your hand. Give me a wave. Who's that person? You were just thinking that. It's my whole spine. Not up here or down there. Who's that person, please? Quick, real fast. Last time I'm going to ask. Be terrible to go home with it. Yeah. Just give me a wave. Come on. I hate missing anybody. Hardly ever do. Come on. Who's that person? It's my whole spine. You just thought it. Where are you? Over here? Where? Somebody's pointing somewhere. Is that? Oh, that's you. Come on down. God's going to heal your spine today. It'll be the quickest prayer you've ever had answered. Wonderful Jesus. I'd like to pray for the person God's telling me about. You have a bug in your stomach and you can't seem to get rid of this bug. It's been there a fair while and it's just, it's just, they can't seem to get rid of it. Who's this person, please? Real fast, come on. I won't wait. Come on. Who's that person? You've got this bug in the stomach. Quick, quick. Real fast, quick. It's not rocket science. I have stomach problem. It could be me. <laughs> Thank you. Come on down. Wonderful Savior. And there's a person here, you're about anemic blood, the Lord's telling me. He's going to fix your blood today. Who here has got anemic blood? Who's that person that the Lord's telling me about? Who's that one? Quick. That's you. Come on down. And God's going to give you a miracle today. He's going to heal you and set you free. And the next time you have a blood test taken, why well, they're going to say, "Wow, well, your blood's come normal. And uh, you'll feel a lot better too. Wonderful. Oh, I do want to pray for a person. You're not that far. You're here in front of me somewhere. And your problem is headaches, like severe, frequent headaches. Who's that person, please? Slip up your hand. Like if there's another one somewhere, you can 
going, come on down. That's the way. You're right in the right spot. And God's going to take them off you and he'll heal the cause of them today. Set you free. Just because he loves you. Now, I didn't think up these things so they don't lodge in my memory. So I don't know what I said about you. So I'll have to ask you, what, did, what was it? And you just tell me. Only in a word or two, I don't want a big story. What was it, sir? Oh, it was in there. Okay, I remember. Brother, oh, there it is, there it is. I feel the Holy Spirit touching you. And there's a miracle in that power that went into you just then. Power fell out of heaven. It was in the tummy. Put your hands on your tummy. I'm just going to touch them quickly with my hand. A power is going to shoot inside of you, but it's a heavenly power. And it'll, there it is, and it'll have healing in it and a miracle just for you. And you take that miracle and you expect it'll never happen again. And should ever the devil try it, tell him to go, that you were healed. You have? Anemic blood, that's right. Why? Oh, lady, I can see a light and it's falling on you from heaven. There it is. There it is. It's going right into you. I see that light. It's a wonderful light. Oh, oh it's all over you. Let it do its work. Hey. Oh, I can feel. I can see it. But I can feel God moving over you. Oh, so can you feel him. I feel him. He's still working with you. The power is going into you. It's like thousands of volts going into you. The power of the living God is flowing into your body to heal your body. Oh, that power is still on you. This is unusual. But that power, there it is, it's pretty much finished now. And so you'll be well. Well, how about that? Wonderful Jesus. Well, God is just so wonderful. There is no one like God. You had a back, didn't you? Prolapse disc. Prolapse disc. Oh, he specializes in them. You're fortunate to have that. <laughs> and you, I don't know what he doesn't specialize. But oh, there it is. Oh, I felt the powerful. One touch from the Almighty. Yeah, Lord, these prolapse discs, they'll all be repaired and straightened up in the name of Jesus. And we give you the honor and the praise and all of the glory. You alone are God, and we worship you. Father, let that power just resolve his problem in the name of Jesus Christ. You had the... The spine. The three, four, and five disuffused. The who? The three, four, and five. The three, four, and five disuffused. Oh, he'll unfuse them today. How about that? And he'll fix them up too. And oh, why? That is, that is, that is now the power just hit you. I can often see like a light from heaven. And I saw it then. Darted into a back fast as anything and he's just loosening up your spine he's setting you free i like to put my hand near the spot where appropriate because he said to me a long time ago i put the gift of healing in your right hand so i just like to put my right hand close if appropriate of course to the spot in the name of jesus of nazareth let the power of the living god create those discs and Fix them all up. Don't you help her to her feet? Uh, two people, that's the way. Up so daisy. There's no pain, There's no pain she said. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> oh, there's no pain. How long have you had that pain? Forever. Forever. Feels like forever. Why don't you touch your toes? How long since you've done that? Oh, I could still do that even though it hurt. <laughs> it hurt. Did it hurt then? No. No. no not at all. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, That's thank Jesus you, for Jesus. you. Thank you. Thank That's you. the Lord. What was your problem? 
the neck. No, headache. The he- oh, Heather, that's right. Oh, yeah, oh, I see the light. I can see it. Lady, you relax. Just relax. That's yeah, always the way to get a miracle is just relax. Because there's nothing we can do to facilitate a miracle except just quietly believe. There's no struggle in believing. And the power of the living God just falling on you now. And Lord, let her neck be made totally whole. Heal the bones. And let them be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, sweetheart. Wonderful set. Oh, well, what time do we stop? About now? One more? I'd like one more. Somebody's knees are worn out. Who's that person? Your knees are worn out. Come on down, have a miracle. Get two brand new knees. Ah, what a good idea. That knee's worn out. Well, he's going to restore it. There it comes, there it comes, there it comes. There it comes now. It's on you now. The power, the healing power, the glorious power is all into that knee. That'll fix that knee up. Dose of divine Holy Ghost power. Loose her infirmity. Go out of her. And let the knee be restored. Okay, come on up. There we go. Give it a flick. How are we going? Fine. 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 Go on, get rugged with the thing. Come on. Come on. Come on, back this way. Come on. Come on. How are we going? It's fine. Fine. That's good. Come on down. So. Hey. Both of them? Yeah. You, you just relax. Because it's all God. And the power is falling on your knees. Now! That's the power. That's the power. That's the power. Don't think about anything. Just let the power go into your knees. Think about Jesus. but Really? Father, let that... Yes. Let that power go into these knees. Restore them, God. Let your healing miracle power set this man free. Amen. Come on up, mate. There you go. Give him a flick. Yeah, come on. Let's do a dance together. How are we going? You can still feel it? Hey? A little bit. So it's improved? Well, come on, everybody. Reach your hand toward him. Let the power fall on him. And that last bit, you go. His knees come well. Amen. Pastor, you... Oh. <laughs> Again, it reads, the power of the living God going into this knee. Oh, God, that you restore this knee. Make this knee perfect. Back to a young knee. Not that she's old, but Lord, give her a a young knee. Like a 20-year-old's knee. God, fix it all up. By the glory of God. The power of the living Christ. We honor you. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Pastor Ian, and if somebody wants prayer, then I'm happy to pray for you. But he'll close the meeting up. Awesome. Wow. Come on. Let's put our hands together. Bless God. Come on. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go. You're good? That's awesome. Wow. Wow. I love this. I'm getting in the front row, you know, you know, Clark often says, just, just relax, you know, which is a really key, it's a real key to receive. And uh, I'm so relaxed, unfortunately, over the years that every time you pray for someone, this power goes through me. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, you, you have a long meeting, I'm just had it, you know, like at the end, I'm, I'm easy game. 
you know, so Clark, it's great to have you with us. It <laughs> really is. Here. If you gave your heart to Jesus this morning, and that response, I just felt that we, was, we were praying the prayer that, uh, that this morning, that someone's just going, this is really for me, but there's a, there's a shyness that, you know, and Clark alluded to uh, as well, and I know his story, he said he was shy, but he, he waited and came, and, and it changed his life. Giving your heart to Jesus Christ just yeah. changes everything. Yeah. It begins to, you become that mirror, you begin to reflect, you begin to understand. So if that's you, come and see Dale and I. Uh, come and see Pastor Ray or Shannon. Just, you know, come and see one of the prayer team here. They'll, they'll hook you up with Jesus, I can tell you. <laughs> It'd be so good. It'd be lovely to pray with you. Well, we're going to have a meeting tonight at 6. We're going to pray for the sick. We're going to do all of that tonight. And uh, so I know there's people coming from Tianao and Gore tonight as well. So come and uh, just be part of it. We're going to have a great time. And, uh, and just let's be part of that and see what God will do. And, and, uh, and uh, that's exciting. If you need prayer, we're just going to open up the altar call just uh, in the next five minutes. And uh, we're going to pray. We're not going to pray long, but if you need someone to pray with you, then we've got a prayer team here. Pastor Clark will be here for a few more moments. And uh, we're going to do that. But there's tea and coffee downstairs. Go and have a great day. Pastor, yeah. Yo. would you mention the product too? Oh, absolutely. We've got some resources down on the table uh, that Pastor Clark has brought with him. And so if you see Leanne down in the foyer, she'll be able to uh, get all of those to you as well. I've got a lot of Clark's resources, and uh, they're on my phone. Uh, I can listen to them, you know, and they're in you know, all kinds of devices I've got. It's really great. And I just feed on that, feed on that. It's brilliant. I love resources. You know, I listen to a message sometime if I'm at a conference for probably 10 times, and, uh, and sometimes more. But it just gets in you. You just don't hear something once. And, uh, and it's really good to be able to do that. All right, God bless you guys. Come on, just to stand one more time. And uh, I want to bless you. Heavenly Father, I want to say thank you for every family that's represented here today. Lord, every individual. Lord, whether we're together or alone today, we bless you in the name of Jesus. And we just pray his peace on you. Pray his peace on your family. And we pray that you would know what it is to walk with mighty God. Lord Jesus Christ, all the days of your life. You can say amen to that. Amen? God bless. All right. Have a great rest of the day. Um, the, the altar is open. The tea and coffee is available. Um, go and grab someone and uh, go and catch up with them. That would be great.